So it's nine o'clock on a Monday morning. Worst day of the week for service in terms of how much we have to do. And if you look behind me, you can kind of see what we have to do. So we're running about 30 minutes behind, but there's a lot going on in the store. Other things that we have to deal with this morning. But yeah, today's Lexington. This is how much water will change before we get to come back. And then when we get back, we get to lift a heavy red sea tank on a stand. So, long day Monday. So, if you've ever made it all the way back to the farthest you can go in fishy business, you may have ran into a ugly, horrible garage door. That is not the case anymore. We have this beautiful, insulated, fully functioning garage door. Can't beat that. All right, hey guys, Scotty Pockets here. I want to talk to you about a coral that's probably my favorite one in the house, but because it's got a lot of personal meaning to me. It's a coral that when I was a saltwater manager 15 years ago, we got in and it was a really cool Rhodactus mushroom. Not like anything I'd ever seen before, but it didn't really, you know, drive me crazy because I figured there's probably more coming down the line. Well, nothing ever came down the line that looked quite like it. Well, a few years ago, I decided to start fragging it. It just so happened, it, it coincided with a really bad time in my life when I lost my cousin, who was like my brother to me. And most of you may not know this, that I was raised on a dairy farm when my cousin runs our dairy farm, or ran it, I should say, I'm sorry to say. Um, he passed away a few years ago. And it coincided right in the time when I started to frag this thing. So I decided this was the point where everybody was naming all the corals and stuff. And I said I wanted to immortalize him. And this thing looks like a, a cornfield. So this thing got or ended up getting named Jack's Electric Cornfield after my cousin. But on a happier note, the reason I'm talking about this coral is we're going to frag it. This coral is pretty technical on, on fragging it because I screwed it up the first time. And then learned the next time how it should be done just by accident, but it's pretty technical and it takes a little while, can't be too aggressive. What we're gonna do is have our little coral specialist, everybody knows Hayden. Hayden is gonna show you exactly how to frag this thing. We're gonna send it right back to Hayden now and he's gonna show us how it's done. All right, and that's how you do it. All right, just kidding. Let me show you how we actually did it. happening? What is? Cutting the mushroom. What? I'm cutting the mushroom. Andrew's, you. Andrew's not here now, is he? Andrew's gonna kill you. Just chopped it right in half. Didn't blink an eye. Nobody, nobody stood a chance. For now. Kara looks so <laughs> concerned. <laughs> Bye guys. Apparently he is more traumatized by this than seeing the ER events that he has witnessed as a uh, paramedic assistant. Traumatized. It's a sessile invertebrate that he just chopped in half with no warning. It didn't ask for that kind of treatment. It looked no. at me wrong. Oh, it no. looked at you It looked wrong? at me wrong. Then why haven't you Peter's cut gonna Gracie get you. yet? <laughs> why haven't you cut Gracie yet? Uh, Gracie cuts back. Yes. Oh. <laughs> I need a cigarette. Like I'm sweating over here. And that's how you cut an expensive mushroom. So Ryan, on a good note, we did actually increase its value a little, believe it or not. No, you just cut the value in half. No, because someone would be more willing to pay two grand for something about half the size, a little bit smaller, than 3500 for one this big. I shouldn't have gotten into salt water. It's okay, Ryan. <laughs> it's okay. I mean, I trust you. No. No, I don't. <laughs> no, I don't. Why, uh, why I, you want to scare Ryan? Ryan for life? I, <laughs> I scarred Ryan for life. Oh, pretty. 
Pretty, pretty. You notice they're already closed back up? Yeah. Cut them 10 minutes ago. Good deal. Two weeks, they'll be fully healed. And then I can cut them again. <laughs> you gonna watch? Why not? <laughs> Don't be scared. Don't be scared. Emotionally scarred, not scared. Some of you may think you have a horrible aquarium or a dirty fish tank. Um, I'll tell you a story of the worst one I have ever seen. I've got about 31 years maintaining them, so I've seen quite a few. Years ago, when Gracie was but a wee pup, we had a phone call to go visit a customer who kind of fell off the face of the earth for about three months. She was having problems, and it's understandable, it happens. She calls us and says she's got a dead fish, she thinks, and wants us to come help. We grab a couple of buckets of water. We make our way over to go do a normal routine maintenance. And I notice a gelatinous film on the surface of the water, probably about an inch and a half to two inches thick. I didn't really understand what I was seeing at the time. And without hesitating, I dove straight in. When my arm broke the surface tension, Everybody in the room starts hurling and gagging and leaves me there alone. Apparently, like a bad CSI episode, almost all of her fish had decomposed, rotted, and had gelatinized on the surface of the water. After doing a huge water change, I did not bring enough water. I probably should have brought more. Hindsight is 2020. I got everything back up and running. There were three fish still alive, large African cichlids, amazed they even made it. Beautiful. It took me probably three weeks to get that smell off of my arm. So when you think your tank is dirty and nasty, I'm gonna tell you, we've seen worse. <laughs>